Oh, let's go line number one and over to Cape Breton. Good afternoon, Bruno. You're on the air. Hi, Patty. How are you today? Oh, not too bad. How about you? Good. A lot going on lately. I, I'd like to touch on a couple of the uh, issues that have been raised. Okay. Uh, Muskrat, let's start with Muskrat Falls. Sure. Uh, we heard we heard some news. Uh, in, incidentally, I have to congratulate you. You've asked oh. some uh, reasonable questions lately about the issues around Muskrat Falls. Uh, and, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to have heard that. Now, we heard that the North Spur issue was going to re- be resolved by year end and cost 278 million, if I heard things correctly. That's right. What that tells me, Patty, is that this is a quick and dirty solution of drilling more wells to try to drain off the water. And, uh, one quick look at the geography there makes you realize what danger there is to the human community of that North Spur failing. Uh, the North Spur directly blocks the river, and it would bypass very quickly. So the engineering study was due in 2011. We've yet to see it. There's this huge both financial risk and a, a risk to human health and safety. Don't you think it's crucial that that engineering study be produced and reviewed by competent people, engineering types? Well, yes, I do. And I've been speaking to it, I think, pretty straightforward, uh, the North Spur the entire while. You know, the, if the geotech work is going to be done and a contract was going to be awarded, we just simply need to know that it has, uh, not just been a matter of low, picking the lowest bidder and, uh, how do they compare with the cost to do whatever they say they're going to do? How does it compare with the numbers inside the budget of DG3? So fair enough. I'm on, I'm actually on side on that one. Yeah, we're on side on a lot of things these days, which is good. The, the other, the next point I want to raise, maybe you don't think so, but uh, the DG3 numbers, is, uh, you know, I have to remind you, always are plus or minus 40%. You have to keep that in mind. Yes. Manitoba Hydro, who produced those DG3 numbers, as I've reminded you before, missed their last DG3 number by 90%, a 90% overrun. I, you only have to do the math on 6.4 million, add 90%. And realize that you're coming close to 12 billion. Now the question that I have for you is, who pays for that extra 6 billion? Well, that would be the ratepayers. All right. Did that, uh, and that's a considerable risk, isn't it, Patty? Oh, of course it is. No doubt about it. You know, the last time we had an update from Nalcor regarding the budget and the work ongoing is that they were on budget and on schedule. Now, the next one big massive contract that's been, you know, not awarded, but actually as has been identified as a preferred bidder, that one, I don't know. I think that's one of the, the big pieces of business that could indeed suffer some massive overruns because that's the, that's the big nuts and bolts part of the project. So that one would be dangerous. And so the question regarding financing in place before that goes ahead is also very reasonable. Uh, Nelcor tells me that they have a lot of quality proposals in hand regarding the financing. Decision will be made by the end of the year about who was accepted as the financier. So they're all good questions. I mean, hopefully we're trying to get the answers. I don't know uh, what else you'd like me to say on the matter this afternoon. No, no, we're doing we're doing good so far. Now, uh, now the next point is Jerome Kennedy resigned over the Na- Nelcor secrecy. If you can uh, believe Uncle Gnarly. Uh, he's a fairly creditable source. And if you believe what he said, Patty, you have a situation where you've got Nalcor that uh, doesn't open its books even to the Minister of Finance. It's almost as though Nalcor were a nation unto itself, a nation that's protected by a monopoly. And uh, it's a terribly frightening notion to think that your own Minister of Finance can't look at the books for the biggest capital project your province has ever undertaken. It's staggering, Patty. Don't you agree? Well, I mean, oversight, I think, you know, even in our own little businesses, a bit of oversight, second set of eyes is always helpful. I would suggest in the public purse it would be uh, legal and mandatory. Uh I mean, the whole, the whole thing about China to me, and I've, once again, I haven't strayed from this, it's the issues that are key, not the characters. I don't care if Kennedy and Dunderdale had to stand in the, in the public square and duke it out. None of that means row beans to me. It's the issues that were apparently or potentially discussed, whether it be oversight or industrial and spec market sales being used for less than my bill. All those things. That's all that matters to me. What, whoever else involved in it, if Kennedy was mad or Dunderdale was mad or someone 
someone, what, look, none of that matters, a row of beans. That's why I've stayed out of it, because it's only the issues that count. Well, the issues, but the issue here with the finance minister not being able to look at the books uh, is a cause for great concern. Now, the point is, uh, you know, you, uh, I have to make one quick point, and that is that uh, when you say, well, we're going to sell the power to Amira now that we've got that deal, it's better than not selling the power. Yep. It, it, that's true, Patty, except for one thing. And that thing is, why the hell are you building it if you're going to lose money by giving most of the power to Amira? That's the first thing. Now, you know, uh, once you've got all of these things up in the air, I have to remind you, no financing in place, all the lawsuits, the North Spur issue. Uh, you, know, you, you know, we've been through the list of the issues. We're now coming to some agreement on most. But, no, but now, Bruno... Uh, so why not stop is the question just, just, until the just, financing is settled, until the North Spur issue is settled, until all of those outstanding issues... Uh, and uh, and the secrecy end. Okay. Wouldn't this be? Uh, could we not possibly save the ratepayer in Newfoundland five or more billion dollars by stopping now and waiting and and uh, until things clear up? And now, Bruno, you and I both know, and no disrespect intended by this, that neither one of us are trying to ingratiate to each other, right? I mean, so it's not that we're on the same page or that makes either one of us any happier or sad, but the issue is regarding financing. They say they have legitimate proposals from a uh, major banking consortium, so that would be that, I guess. You know, it, it does take time to select a preferred bid when it comes to financing billions of dollars. They say they got they the work done on the... They don't have a loan guarantee, Patty. Who? They don't have a loan guarantee. But, that's also, but that. that's also why the hold on the financing decisions is until there's a satisfaction of the UARB conditions. They go, they go okay, hand why, why, they, they don't hand stop. Hand. why don't they stop until that thing is up in the air? If our UARB says no thanks, you're totally out to lunch with your rate payers on the hook for 10 or $12 billion. Well, you, Why not stop until this stuff gets clear? Isn't that a simple and, and a, a reasonable question at this point? Well, I guess that's why there hasn't been an actual awarding of a contract for a billion plus dollars to Astaldi. The, the money that's being spent currently is for the for very fundamental stuff. Clearing roads and clearing trees and that kind of stuff. I mean, to stop, fair enough. But then, of course, everyone you've got on the hook as a human resource, they also maybe fly the coop. So there's a, there's a legitimate bouncing actor that NALCO or anyone else has got to do. The next big expenditure being the Astaldi contract, I would feel 100% better if it was in concert with financing in place. Yes. So far as the UARB goes, I would assume there'd be a fairly quick turnaround here. The proposal has hit them today. It'll be presented to the public on the UARB website. I can't imagine it will take too long for all three parties to come up with a this is good or this is bad position. So I think things are starting to happen fairly quickly and all of that is all in play when it comes to the federal loan guarantee. You can't pick one out. They're all built in together. Well, and then there's the lawsuits and all the rest of it. Patty, uh, you know, we have to disagree finally that it's time to stop and have a look and open the books. That Jerome Kennedy couldn't look at the books is an outrage that should concern oh, anyone no. who cares about a democracy. But, Patty, I want to I briefly touch on a couple of other issues. Just, just quickly, though, you're also now Des Sullivan, who I have tremendous respect for, just because his sources say something doesn't make it true. So we don't know what Kennedy said. Kennedy's not talking. That's where we, that's where we get caught up in the personalities and the characters well, and the emotions of the foolishness. We, the issues are key, uh, not the players. Sullivan is a creditable uh, source I just said from that. all accounts, and I think you have to take him seriously and not just dismiss it out of hand. But I don't think so, it's true. But it's, it, I didn't dismiss it. Now, you have to be fair, Bruno. And it's also, I think, a, a mischaracterization of the reality that Kennedy cannot look the Nalcor books. I don't think that's true. I think the Minister of Finance can look at the books. I think the Auditor General can look at the books. People say well, it all the time, but I don't think it's true. You're saying you trust Gnarly, but you don't believe him. Uh, you know, no, 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 no. I said, but no, but, but listen, he could be reporting the exact truth he heard from people's mouths. It doesn't mean that there's not people inside the Department of Finance or Confederation building that are doing some potential exaggeration, weren't in China, but are telling what they heard. I mean, you know what it's I'm saying, possible. Bruno. There's it's lots possible. of possibilities here. It's possible, but the hard facts are that's what he said. He's a creditable source. It's an outrage, and you should stop now. Well, okay, Bruno, now, we've already I, had I that wanna, discussion. I'm late for the news. Yeah, I'll give you I another 30 talk seconds. About Cita and Fish, you are rarely, if ever, uh, going to have Gus Echegarry and I agreeing on a fisheries issue. We've been butting heads for a quarter of a century. 
On this issue, we completely agree. I tell you what, Bruno. Factory, the European factor freezer trawlers are going to end up owning your fishery. Him and I disagree on what the, uh, the future fishery should look like in Newfoundland and Labrador. I believe the fish should belong not to Canadian draggers instead of European draggers. I believe the fish belongs to adjacent communities and that your government you know, has fallen down by refusing to put together a marketing plan that would empower those communities. Bruno, you know what, just, just quickly, I have to jump in, please, Bruno, 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 please, please, we've, we've, this has been okay today. It's 3.02, I'm late for the news. What I can say is at the end of the week, if you want to talk fisheries and CETA, I'm happy to do it. But today I just have okay. to go to the break, it's a matter of time constraints. I appreciate your call. Okay, just one last thing. The, nope. uh, they left Brazil because they were booted out uh, over those spying allegations. Is that not clear to you? The, the Brazilians it's are smart they... enough. To, the Brazilians are smart enough to know that the Newfoundlanders didn't send down the spies, nor do we have any care or control of the spy agency of the government of Canada. They know that, and if they don't, then boy, we got bigger problems in dealing with them in the mining business. Yeah, I got to go to the break. Take, Kathy couldn't take the heat over the questions about spying. She's tougher than you. Manhole. She's tougher than you think. Well, Look I no further, she's so. still around taking her knocks. Bruno, I'll, I'll, we'll talk again later in the week. Thank you. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.